And we are back to another Boss Bus Between the Cheeks with Gentle Giants Extreme Extravaganza. Yeah. What's up, Paul? I, you know, just um, keeping it real. Um, recently just been looking into new jobs and stuff and getting some good feedback on that. Been working out again, and that's always good to do. And then still just doing the banjos and keeping it real. How about you, bud? Uh, chilling, uh, working, uh, definitely still doing keto, working out more. Uh, getting my getting my tits removed before dance fest so oh, I can yeah. bounce around all night. Yeah, and get that conditioning in so you can go the whole night. Yeah, that's that's my problem. Yeah, I feel like if I were to dance for like two hours at a festival, I'd be like, oh, yeah. I want a fucking cheesesteak. Well, that's the thing is like at this point, any other year we have been at like multiple festivals and shows all the time and be dancing every night, but like with the world as it is, not you don't have a, that. That was my conditioning for most of the years, you know. True. Yeah. Yeah, it kept me it kept me fit, and now I'm like, well, I work from home. <laughs> I just sit. I gotta try to stay in shape. Yeah, you're right. I feel it. Okay. Cool. You wanna start the the intro to what yeah. we're doing here? Yeah, we're doing something a little different today. Um, I had an idea of something we can maybe create a series off of and do other stuff in the future. But um, today we are going to be um, diving into Gentle Giant, which is a progressive metal band from or progressive rock band from the '70s. Um, we, I introduced Zach to an album that he's never heard before, um, called The Power and the Glory, which is one of my favorite albums, and he listened through it, he just finished listening to the entire thing, and, um, we're gonna get his first impression of it, and then also to kind of dive into, like, the music, the band itself, and, um, the story of the album and stuff like that, um, and it, we encourage all of you to, um, be, to pause the episode here, mm-hmm. um, to go back if you want to listen to the album yourself, because, um, I'm guessing most of the bar audience hasn't listened to a lot of Prague, which is understandable, and that's yeah. fine, um, especially Gentle Giant. But yeah, if you don't have to, of course, you can just listen to us and maybe make your opinion of going into it after that, but mm-hmm. it might make the conversation a little more fun if you listen to the album and then come back. So if you want, here's your chance to pause the album, or pause the podcast and yep. go listen to the album. Go listen to it. It's really good. Do it. You won't regret it. And welcome back. If you did listen to the album, congratulations. I um, yep, hope congrats. you liked it. If you didn't, I understand. It's a little complicated. But um, little context, this is like one of my favorite albums. This is a band that I have fell in love with like way many years back. Um, I've always been a big prog head, but they're a little more underground. Um, Zach, this is your first time listening mm-hmm. to the album. So what was your first impressions of this? I would say the first thing is I had no idea they were from the 70s. Mm-hmm. No shot. When was this album made? Um, this one I believe was like 74, 75. Wow. Yeah. That's like, that feels so ahead so of So the there. context is, is basically the big three in prog rock are, um, Genesis, like old school Genesis, 70s Genesis, um, yes, 70s yes, and King Crimson. Um, they were the big three popular ones. Um, progressive rock was re- started in the 70s. It was really big then and then kind of died out and was more underground after that. Mm-hmm. Um, and these guys came out basically at the same time as them, and most and all of them came out of England, besides, I think, King Crimson. Um, but they kind of stayed in England and didn't really um, get as popular as the other ones because they're a little more complex and a little harder to kind of even comprehend, even though those are already hard to comprehend. Um, yeah, let me look at the actual date. This is, yeah, 73 was when this one came out. Wow. Yeah. No, that, I, I was, it was definitely the best word I could describe it, and I immediately messaged Paul this as well. Like, it felt like an actual journey. Mm-hmm. Like, it felt, it felt almost medieval in a sense, or like a renaissance right. fair, like, like, journey. <laughs> um, I saved a few of the songs that really stood out to me the most. Obviously, Proclamation. Oh, yeah. I, one of the best I've heard ever. that so many times, and I, I think, think I've shown you multiple times. Yeah. Before. I show that, because it's one of the perfect songs to just introduce people to Prague, because it's, so much stuff going on. I always call it like scatterbrain music. Where it's like mm-hmm. every person's playing their own thing and it's like does not mesh, but it does. Like it's like all this stuff's going on, but then if you let it kind of dance around each other, it kind of blends into this larger um, story. Layers. Yeah. Yeah, I um, I did not know what to expect at all. But Paul kind of told me like the, the story of it. But really, Proclamation stood out to me. Um, I think it was... Uh, Playing the game. Mm-hmm. No, I think it was So Sincere, actually. So Sincere is a little... So Sincere... Dude, I was yeah. stair-stepping, and I was like, So <laughs> sin, 
See, yeah. it was great. Um, and then also uh, valedictory, the the dichotomy between yeah. proclamation and valedictory, mm -hmm. that felt so cool. Yeah. Like valedictory felt really dark, whereas yeah. proclamation. Well, that's was like, yeah, that was a kind of goal. So for people who don't know, this was um a um concept album, which is a pretty popular thing in prog rock where like they basically have a story it's almost like a rock opera kind of style where they're telling like a play or an opera or a story through the through the album mm -hmm. and so this was their um i think it was their first um concept album um it's about a man who um rose to power through like a revolution and kind of gained became king and kind of at first just like we're gonna change things everything's gonna be better like fuck the old system we're gonna like we're gonna make it better for everybody, mm -hmm. and then the album, as it goes on, it's slowly him getting consumed by that same power that he fought to take, and like trying to change, and realizing he's just being as corrupted as the person before him. And so, like, yeah, the the last first and last song, um, so like the Power and the Glory song that you listen to at the end, that one was not on the original album. That was released mm. afterwards. Okay. Um, for more a later release. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so like. The beginning and the end, kind of. He, at first, he's just like he's the guy saving everything, and at the end, he's the king that's like, "Fuck, no, yeah, it dude. can't change. We gotta keep it the same." Fuck, and it's just like it's fun to see that dynamic and mm -hmm. like so sincere. The lyrics are fun because like the way like they kind of cut the phrases makes it so like things like he'll do it all for you. You will see it. Wise knowing what to do, what to be everywhere it is. Every word is, and then lies. He only tells the truth. So it's like Ooh. the way they say it yeah. is like. It sounds like it's gonna be good, but if you re listen to it in the, the way it's broken up, mm -hmm. it's like um, deceptive and like oh. treacherous. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. I feel like mm -hmm. I feel like the first listen. I don't think I got the. I couldn't take everything. Oh in. no, it's too hard. Yeah, that's a, that's an album you have to like listen to multiple times to kind of break down because the first time there's just so much. So and much going on. My favorite part about Gentle Giant is how they play with dissonance, like. Like the part in Proclamation where they're doing the hand with power, and it's just like five different like people singing, and they're all like dissonant, like they're not blending, and that kind of pervades through the whole album of this like dissonance that's slowly creeping in, and then when you get to the valedictory at the end, it's just like from Dude. the beginning, it's just breaking down. Dude, like the fact that like literally the whole time, like two voices, him, just like I could tell he was fucking losing it. Yeah. Like I oh I love that so much, dude. It's so fun. But yeah, and like yeah, so they definitely have a more so so prog rock itself is a blend of rock and roll, especially seventies rock and roll, um, jazz, and classical music. That's what prog rock is, and each band kind of tilts those scales one way or other a little more or less. Um, and Gentle Giant is probably the most classical influenced of any of the prog I've listened to. Mm -hmm. Like they're very baroque, like kind of Bach, like very um, structured and lots of notes all over the place, running up and down scales yeah. and like playing back and forth off of multiple instruments. And so like, and that's super technical, super math focused and super like the rhythms and the poly um, tonal kind of chords and stuff. And so that's why like, they are one of the most like um, technically brilliant bands. I've ever Dude, it, it felt a bit like I was listening to math, but like beautifully crafted <laughs> math. Yeah. Like, Renaissance math, it felt like, mm -hmm. and that, that makes so much sense that they had the classical inspirations. Mm -hmm. And his his voice, he's, he's got that perfect like Dude. medieval minstrel, like traveling, like bard kind of voice. Yeah, um, that's really interesting though because I did not know that that's what prog rock was. Yeah. I thought pr prog rock was closer to like prog metal or um, I can't think of the name of it. But there's a, a band that D showed me that's like super like pro like hard. I guess like hard prog rock. Mm -hmm. or how? Well, pr me prog metal, or, or um, which like kind of like Dream Theater or um, Hawken or like any po Porcupine Tree. They're more modern. They kind of take Gentle Giant as like this, or, or prog rock mm -hmm. as like a stepping stone because prog rock itself isn't really that potent anymore. It was a big yeah. '70s thing, and then even like the bands like. Like Genesis is was the like name in um, prog rock, and in the eighties, basically all the members besides Phil Collins left, and Phil Collins kind of took over the band, and it was like a poppy rock kind of style, like Sue Sue Studio and that stuff. And I love Phil Wait, Collins. Phil Collins was in a prog rock band. Yeah, he was the drummer for Genesis back when they were prog, and then Peter Gabriel, who was like the head of the band, and all the other like main people left. I've heard and of Peter Gabriel. Yeah, Peter Gabriel is one of the 
best lyricists and he's amazing but that's for another podcast but um <laughs> yeah when they left phil collins kind of took over and basically completely changed the sound to that more like pop rocky like you think of genesis like susu studio or um oh, i can see you i can hear you calling in the end of the i thought night. that yeah and no, i thought that was one of the best songs mm -hmm. but like but no i mean it is a newer genesis but like First, I love Phil Collins and he's great, but like I also hate him because Gen Genesis was so fucking amazing and like <laughs> we don't have a band like that anymore and it's just terrifying that it changed from that to this and it's like so I have a little bit of a vendetta even though he did Tarzan. I've never <laughs> I've never heard Genesis. Well, so, I'll be in the next one. We'll have to do you know between two teeths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but yeah, so. And even with Gentle Giant and um, Yes, they also changed the sound. Like, Yes did that. Um, na, 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 na. I forgot. I can't think of the mm -hmm. song. Of the sing. It's a popular song, but um, they changed their sound as well and got more popular because prog rock was a little more harder to comprehend. It's not easy listening. It's not stuff. It's not rock you can just turn on and, like, have a conversation to or, like, hang out. And, like, it's something you kind of have to sit and listen to and know what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's harder to dance to. It's harder to, like simple listening it's not pre-digested yeah no i like all i could do was like step when i like thought the beats were and i was like all right yeah I then it real. just changes yeah the and then i'm the like oh, oh god <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's probably not the best workout music but dude that's how it worked it, it was it honestly like i would really recommend it as a first listen to any yeah. like anything i feel like it was a great introduction mm -hmm. i i mean it's um it's a little more technical than some people would want going into it because mm -hmm. like it's kind of throwing you into the deep end and some people like that some people like the weird music other people want to kind of be introduced and mm -hmm. so I'll do it different ways but yeah if you are interested in like weird music and like technical brilliance and like because each one of these band members plays like 10 different instruments they are just fucking insane and watching like their live performances like that they can actually play this stuff live is like you shouldn't be able to play this live like it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> I couldn't work. imagine it I'll have to watch a video mm -hmm. Um, wow. No, I, I, I am impressed and came in with zero expectations of what it could be, and yeah. I was just not expecting that. Well, yeah. I, there's nothing better. What were some negatives or some thorns about that you didn't like? Um, I would say the only the only thing that I would say that keeps me back from appreciating it fully is just the fact that like. There was so much going on my first listen through that I couldn't really grasp at the story. Like I could, and I definitely got the beginning and the end. But I think that's also kind of like a that was I think meant to be in its I mean in its form. Like it was written in this way, and like yeah. if I really probably paid attention to all of the lyrics and things going on. Mm -hmm. but, but I mean, like, you couldn't. Like honestly, yeah. you can't do that the first time. Like this is these the amount of effort and technical ability put into it. You can appreciate it all from a first listen. Yeah. You have to like, and then again, that's again why it's harder than like popular music to get into is because you have to kind of sit and let yourself kind of break it down and like mm -hmm. be intentional, intentional about your listening rather yep. than like Passive. putting on, yeah, putting on, I can hear it coming in the end of the night, the end, yep. just that one do, do, beat do, do, and that's do, it. Do, yeah. Do, do. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. That's in the fact that that's like the only, the only, not even negative, but just like difficult aspect mm -hmm. about it. I, I loved it. I loved the instruments. I loved his voice. Mm -hmm. His voice is just catchy. Not like even without any lyrics. I've had some. I've had some complaints. Like my dad, he he likes prog rock. He loved Genesis. Like he he showed me Genesis and yes, mm -hmm. and he just can't. He doesn't like the guy's voice, and so he just can't get into him. And I'm like, come on. True. I guess, I guess if you didn't like his voice, it would be a little tough. Yeah. But I. Especially with this album. But there are other albums, like, again, they have, like, probably, like, eight amazing albums. This wow. one's the first one I listened to and kind of got me into them. But, no, actually, this is the second one I listened to. Freehand was the first one I listened to. But this was, like, the one where I was, like, with story and everything. I love the story of, like, how power corrupts and how, like, these people that this revolution happens and they want to change the world and they just slowly get consumed by what they were fighting. Mm -hmm. It's a great story arc. And it makes the songs even better once you're listening. Like how at first he's like, "We're gonna do it," and then so sincere, he's basically his declaration. 
and like but like you can kind of see how things are like can be misinterpreted or see the kind of cocks coming um same with aspirations is that where he's like we're gonna come true like that's the slow one the little aspirations like mm-hmm. hopes dreams Dude, i had to hopes, turn it up i was like is, this, is it still coming? yeah that one was just nice little like slow groove mm-hmm. little kind of like him like putting out what he wants to do and like the goal of it and then he's starting to play the game and he's starting to see the power and like I'm never gonna lose. Like I know what I'm doing. Everything's kind of going together. But he's like, he's starting to get in this cocky kind of ego and like feel of self about it. Mm-hmm. And then you go into like cogs and cogs, where he's starting to see like the mechanisms behind. I it. like that. I, I like that, that one so is fun. one of the most like technically like cogs and cogs is really it's it's a little harder to like because it's so um, so much. Um, and he's like, all words are saying nothing. The air is sour with discontent. No returns have been tasted or the art they ever sent. It's just like just like talking about how like he's he's being changed. As so his cogs are turning, he's mm-hmm. kind of changing with it. And then no God's a man is when he's realizing like I am not this like power that I wanted to be, and I am just a human, and I'm being consumed by it. Mm. And then you get um, the the face where he is already like he's he's part of the system now, and he's part of he's the one in control. And then valedictory is when the people turn on him and he's starting to lose and he's like fuck no yeah we need to stay the same like we can't change anymore and then power and the glory is kind of like the next guy coming in and it's like the revolution came this guy's gone and another guy's coming in and he's gonna do it now and it's just like that's that circular just continues and continues you know yeah no uh, power and the glory that was it's interesting that it's not on did they like they released it after the album and then um so the one I sent you, I think, was the Steve Wilson remix. So, um, Steve Wilson is um, from King Crimson, amazing um, in, musician. And a lot of the things he does now is he will go back to old um, albums, old prog albums, like remaster them and like, clean them up and make them like more auditorily and like visually, like just sound better and everything, like clean it up. So like, yeah. what they actually wanted yeah. out, even though the technology at the time couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. And by that time, they had released Power and the Glory as a single after it. And they played it in the shows when they played this album, and so he brought that in at the end because it kind of, it does fit in with the story. As like that a makes sense. Prologue. Yeah, you know. No, that that makes sense. That's oh, that's so cool, dude. I I am I don't know. I'm I'm taken aback by by my not only lack of expectations but sheer impressedness with the album overall. Yeah. And I need to get more into Prague, I think is what I've learned. Well, that's what I'm here for. Like that's literally like Prague and Psytrance, I will I will talk to my friends ears off about it and I will always give them like we we did this fucking podcast so I could introduce you to it, you know? Like it's great. And again, if any of you guys haven't listened to it yet, at least listen to the first one. If you can yep. listen to Proclamation and you don't like it, something's wrong with you, but you're fine. But don't listen to more. But if you like that, then you have a and you're not really into prog or never really like stepped your toes into it. You got a journey ahead. Of you. Yeah, no, you definitely do. Um, yeah, definitely. I would recommend fully, um, and I want to do more of these. Oh, of course, and like again, you can do ones for me. Like I don't know a lot about house or any of like the EDMs besides Cyphers because that's kind of my wheelhouse. Or like in. But yeah, like, and you could do the same thing with like EDM, because like I'm not really that versed in like um, anything besides sight trance, and like also like pop punk. Like my big pop punk was Saves the Day, and I love Saves the Day, and they're Ooh. my favorite pop punk band. But I don't know a lot past that. Like I had an emo phase, and it was just Saves the Day and like sight trance and death metal. You know. I mean that's a good combo. I've, uh, my shirt right now is from my previous favorite band, A Skylet Drive. But I'm thinking, if we, I, I want to do a, I want to introduce you to Dance Gavin Dance because I'm going to see them soon. Yeah, you showed so me like, a couple of songs of theirs before. True, right? but I like the, if fun. you listen to the whole, the whole out, um, it's pretty. It's it's a totally like take this and do the opposite. <laughs> like, yeah, simplified but like weird in a different way. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I feel that. I think it'd be great. And if you guys have any album suggestions that we should both yeah. listen to for the first time or like mm-hmm. different genres. Yeah. This would be a fun little segment of the podcast that we can continue with. Um, yeah. Because like we said in like a previous podcast that we're trying to like branch out because doing the interviews with the artists is kind of like coming to a 
dry it's dyed patch. Down. Yeah. Definitely. But yeah. Yeah, so Power and the Glory. Anything else you want to talk about? Say about it. Anything that you have you like <clears throat> that you have Honestly, n- nothing that I've not already thought about besides just the please technical. at least the technical aspects. Listen to Proclamation, it's listen insane. to Valedictory. Those two I mean, listen to the whole thing, but you'll love yeah. the the dichotomy, the differences mm-hmm. and the contrasting like feelings yeah. of the songs together. And like Gentle Giant is like if you're into prog like, if you're in the prog community, which I'm a part of, and, like, especially, like, the Facebook pages and stuff, like, people, like, the, the, the average prog listener doesn't know about Gentle Giant. But, like, if you know about Gentle Giant, you're, like, they're the best. Yeah, like, you, if, if you're into prog, you might not know about Gentle Giant, but if you know about Gentle Giant, you're into prog. Yeah, so like, yeah. It's kind of like the, um, the, um, the emblem that, like, you know what you're talking about with like prog. Like if I'm yeah. talking to someone, I'm like, oh, you like bands here, here, here. Like we like Gentle Giant. Like who? I'm like, you don't know about prog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you know. It's kind of a gatekeep. And I love it because another thing is, um, so Anthony, me and Anthony, our favorite band is Gentle Giant. But I showed him Gentle Giant, and he will never li- let me live. He'll never live that down. Like he gets so upset that I showed him his favorite <laughs> band, and I'm just like, hey, Joe. Oh, gotcha. Hey, Johnny. Yeah. He denies it, but he knows it's real. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, Gentle Giant, Power and the Glory. Take a listen. If you haven't already, if you did, um, comment below what you liked about the album, if there's mm-hmm. things we didn't talk about, if you have questions or things you don't like about it even, like what you yeah. didn't want, what you didn't like about it. Um, yeah. And again, if you have other albums or things you want us to review, it'd be great too. Yeah, that sounds that sounds awesome. Thank you for showing me what prog is. I literally did not even know this you was. You've heard me prog. talk about prog. Yeah, before. yeah, I've heard you talk about it so many times, and I'm like, prog. What does it mean? <laughs> but now I know. It's crazy. It's math, and it's beautiful. It's math. Yeah, it's it's literally modern classical music. Like yeah. So there's this. I actually wrote a. I actually wrote a a, a tw- ten page paper in my philosophy of music class about this album. So there's this old, there's this like 1970s philosopher who, um, Adorno, who grew up in um, like during the World War II when like the Nazis started being big. And he was like, he's super communist, super like socialist philosopher. And he talks about like, and he's super into music and he loves like classical music and like this complicated music. And he talks about like pop music or popular music at the time. And again, granted, this was 60s, 50s, 60s yeah. into the beginning of the 70s. And, um, he was talking about like how popular music is more um, a commodity than an art, and how like music is so mm-hmm. simplified and pre-digested and um, not really an actual like art because it's like the same song, just a little different and a little separated than what it used to be, or than yeah. like than the last song that was mm-hmm. in the top forty. And um, tragically, he died right before Prague became a thing. But I wrote a paper about like how he how he would consider like how Prague um, goes against his argument that popular music isn't art anymore because this is literally like classical music for the modern age for the classic for the for the popular like for the rock person right? yeah because it, it requires it does take a lot of themes from that classic it takes like these technical dances it takes this baroque era like math and stuff mm-hmm. and it doesn't it's not pre-digested you can't like just print it out every other week like these take actual effort and artistic ability to mm-hmm. develop and they have stories to tell and all that stuff and so like i wrote a 10 page paper Dude. on this album and my teacher who never who liked kind of like prog but he was more of a jazz guy I told him, like, I was like, before you read my paper, listen to this album, <laughs> and then read my paper, and he's like, damn. <laughs> he loved it. And he was like, a, he was a jazz drummer, so he was like, nah, this is fucking insane. Dude, you know? so much jazz influence. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're looking for jazzy prog, I would go for King Crimson. King Crimson's King Crimson. more jazzy. Genesis is more, like, rocky prog. Yeah. And with that, still has that classical one, but they all blend it. Like, that's yeah. the thing. It's just, like, you take all those things, you know? And that's kind of, yeah. But yeah, that's the rest of all we can say for that. Wow. Great. Um, I learned a lot. I hope you guys learned a lot and also listened. Um, if not, there's going to be a link down below. Uh, yeah. Like we said, comment. Think we'll of, put it in the description of the YouTube and then on yep. the Facebook and then a way to get to it from the Synergy site. Yep. We'll get it all. Mm-hmm. But other than that, 
Thank you so much for listening. Mm-hmm. Um, check out Gentle Giant. Thank you again, Paul, for being here. Oh, and I thank hope you, you for listening. Yeah, thank thank you for thank you for being here. Yeah, uh, you guys real. have a good night. Keep, Keep it real. real.